Hey, so have you ever kind of felt like you aren't making progress in life? You aren't making progress in love. You aren't making progress in your career. And there's this feeling of stuckness. Well, I want to dive into some of the reasons why this can happen. I came across a quote this week that really stood out to me. It was actually a really long quote, but I'm just going to read to you one little section. It says, ambition is frozen desire. It's by David White. And the reality is that so much of us feels like as long as we have ambition towards something that we're creating movement and we're creating traction and growth in our life, but that isn't necessarily true. So I want to unpack that. Um, if you're new here, I'm Keitra Thompson. I'm a certified master hypnotist and a relationship recovery coach focusing on attachment style and how that affects your life subconsciously in the way you interact in your relationships and in your decision making. So what I do for my clients is I help them go back on a subconscious level to reframe all that. So if you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description below where you can check out all the info and you can set up a completely um, complimentary, no charge consultation call so that we can get to the bottom of what's going on with you and I can give you my best recommendation. So, okay. So ambition is frozen desire. Well, this really caught me off guard when I heard it because I always felt like ambition is a really good thing. Like we should be ambitious about, you know, accomplishing the things that we want in life, but it's actually sort of a definition that could keep us stuck because if our belief system is that our ambition, um, has to get us to certain markers or certain points in our life before we can fully love and experience and build in our own life, then that's a problem because it means our past is now defining us. It means we are lacking openness and curiosity to allow life to come toward us in a new way, in a way we haven't experienced before. So, for example, have you ever gone on a trip and you've had all of this stuff planned out, the whole itinerary, all the places you want to stop, everything's, you know, been researched and, you know, all the best places. And then you just kind of take a, a side trip and discover that that was maybe the best part of your trip. I remember um, being up in Canada and going to the Banff area, which is really well-known, um, beautiful, popular area, and sort of stumbling upon this place called Lake Louise, which was probably, I don't know, maybe 30 miles from Banff. It was the most stunning place I had probably ever seen. Um, there were glaciers on the mountaintops. The water was turquoise blue. It was just absolutely stunning in every way and actually inspired me to go back at different times of the year and sort of experience this place again and again. And by far, it ended up being the most spectacular part of that trip. But if I hadn't been open and curious and willing to take a different path and divert the way that I was heading, I wouldn't have come upon it. It wasn't in the itinerary. And that's kind of how life goes. We think that we have to have everything in order or that we have to get ourselves back to who we once were. Let's say we reached this level of success in the past and we haven't reached it again. Something happened and we lost it and we don't let things into our life because we think we have to become what we once were before we can welcome in that relationship or start really having fun or, you know, trying new hobbies or whatever that is, because we think we have to check off the boxes first. But the reality is the only life and reality that you have is right now. It's not, um, once you reach those goals. And so 
it's like this false belief that we tell ourselves that as long as we have ambition towards something that we're accomplishing what we want and we're moving and what actually happens is a lot of times we look back years later and realize we haven't we haven't created anything at all we haven't moved we haven't built and um this can happen a lot in the relationship realm. If you're holding off on making those connections until you have everything in life in order, then you're missing out and years and years can pass you by. And that can go for anything in your life. If you're not actually being present and open and curious about something coming into your life that maybe doesn't look exactly like you imagined, maybe doesn't... Um, fit the mold of who you used to be in the past but you miss it because you're being rigid about your past and so I think this can happen in so many ways um it's a matter of deciding that you are going to consciously be open so my youngest son just came home from college for summer and I just spent this whole last winter for the first time in my life with an empty house and no one at home. I've gotten pretty used to everything staying tidy and picked up. And, and um, in the first moment he came home, all of that changed, right? His stuff is everywhere. There's dishes in the sink. The dishwasher's running once a day instead of once every four days. And if I was being rigid about the way the house needed to be kept and everything needed to be perfect and in order, I would absolutely be missing the fact that the togetherness that I get to have with him being in my space is so much sweeter, is so much more precious than any rigid rules that I would have in my brain around that. And so it's a making a conscious effort to allow things differently to come into your life. And one thing that is really apparent to me is this exists mostly this exists in the story in our mind the story that we tell ourselves and the story we tell other people that we keep reiterating if the stories you tell are mostly about your past or how you want to get back to your past or or something you experienced in your past which is fine to have but they're not about what you're dreaming of in the future, what you're working toward, not just in that ambitious way of um, I have to check these boxes, but in what would feel good in the future, but also right now in the present moment, what feels really good? What am I grateful for? What can I appreciate? What is making life really great right now today? And if there isn't anything really making life great today. If you're just saying, okay, I get through my days. I have my coping mechanisms. I keep my routine. I go to the gym. I go to work. I try to eat healthy, but you really can't name anything that's bringing you joy. Like I'm building really great connections with my friends. I'm, I'm meeting new people. I'm trying new things. I'm open. Um, then you might just be stuck in this ambitious mindset that thinks you have to check all the boxes and keep moving when in reality, you're not even enjoying your present life. And your fears might be holding you back. That can relate to your attachment style where you might be um, anxious, you might be fearful, you might be avoidant, and that might be controlling how you make your decisions and controlling the story that you tell. Um, that can be a big deal. Your past experiences are part of your subconscious programming and that can be playing into the way that you live your life. But in reality, if you're just getting by, if you're just getting through most of the time, we all have days where we just get through. But if you're just kind of getting by the majority of of your life, you're not really being open to newness and curiosity, and you are stuck in frozen desire. You probably want more. 
And a lot of times I ask my clients, how is, after they've told me all the things they want to change, I ask them, how is it that you want to feel on the perfect day? And a lot of times they cannot answer that question. It's very vague. It is, um, well, I want to, you know, have peace or I want to be happy. They don't even really know how to describe it beyond that. And with a little help, they get there where they realize, oh, I want to wake up excited about my day. I want to look forward to what I'm doing. I want to make connections that feel good. I want to feel confident and courageous. And I want to have a sense of purpose for myself. And I want to be connected to people who make me, you know, feel alive and help me, you know, build what I'm trying to build, where I feel supported. But those answers don't usually come to mind at first. And most of the time it's because they just haven't felt that way before. They just haven't experienced it. And so if you haven't experienced it, you might be running on autoplay where your subconscious mind is running on old programming. Your subconscious mind loves the past. It's trying to protect you from experiencing things you experienced in the past, but you are not who you were in the past. You have way more knowledge, way more wisdom, and so much more um, potential to actually live an authentic life. And so if this is you, if you feel like you're stuck trying to find the right relationship, and you keep ending up with the same kind of person with the same kind of issues. If you're even in a marriage and you feel like you just don't know what to do to make it amazing again, maybe you're really trying to figure out what you want. If you feel that stuckness, it's probably a sign that you're not living in your authenticity and you're also not living in openness and curiosity. And usually that's because you've got a roadblock in the subconscious mind. So with my clients, I help them go back on the subconscious level through custom, custom hypnotherapy processes so that we can reframe those beliefs that are actually holding them back because when they were formed, you didn't have a lot of discernment. And so when we can do this on a subconscious level, you can actually change the way you function. It's an incredible process. I love it. Um, but a few things you can do today is you can start being self-reflective every single day. Don't wait until that relationship falls apart. Don't wait until you're totally burned out and the crisis happens. Don't wait until um, you've been burning the candle at both ends for so long, you don't even know what else to do. Start every day asking yourself, what is it that I would like to feel? You can ask yourself, what is it I need? What is it I want? And what do I desire? Now, the real time in that day might be, I needed support today. I needed someone to connect with today. Um, what do I want? What do I desire? Well, I want someone who will connect with me authentically. I desire fun and playfulness and someone who wants to build daily with me towards something incredible and amazing and new, right? But start asking yourself every single day instead of waiting until you feel like you don't have anything left. Because once you start asking yourself every day, then you can start meeting your needs in real time. So tuning in, asking yourself what you need. The second part of that is starting to take action, creating a plan where you can take action, start sharing your needs, making requests of those around you so that you can be more open and vulnerable set up a plan to create connections with people so that you can create more support around you. Whatever it is, creating that actionable plan is really, really important. You don't need to know the next 20 steps. You just need to know what is the next smallest step so that I can make progress in my life in feeling present and happy and loved um, right here and right now. And I will say that most of the time we don't do this in isolation. We don't go off and be alone forever and think we've got it all figured out. We usually need to seek out help for some 
aspect of this. Like we need to get the help from someone who can actually help us heal those parts of us and navigate forward in a way that's helping us be connected to ourselves and create the life that we want. So whatever you choose to do, um, even if it's not hypnotherapy, I do encourage you to choose a modality that is going to actually make a difference in your life that's going to create some momentum and traction which is what i love so much about the hypnotherapy process because it works on a subconscious level and our subconscious mind is driving over 95 percent of everything we think feel and do so doing the work on the subconscious is so much more effective than really any other path, even though there's lots of other things that are great and helpful. This is the one thing that really gets people the traction that they want so that they actually feel different. And it's not just more head knowledge, more books to read. It's actually a different feeling. So I would encourage you to tune in, start asking yourself what you want and making that action plan. And if this content resonates with you, if you feel like you've been stuck in this frozen desire where you just aren't actually creating a life that feels good to you, I would really appreciate it if you'd click like and subscribe so you could be notified every time I post a new video. So until next time, I hope you curate a life by your own design.